Well, welcome to the Easy Odds video cast for the next Premier League weekend. It's a crackerjack, and lo and behold, there's an extra person in the room. It's a very warm welcome back to Tonga Pau Pau, who's uh, been doing his Vasco da Gama routine, uh, circumnavigating the world. How are you, Tom? Uh, fine, thanks, Paul. Yeah. How was it down under? Uh, not quite down under in that in that respect. Uh, but sort of. Yeah, yeah, it was hot, too hot. It was hot. It was too hot. Uh, and uh, Simon uh, Hopper is with us again, uh, fresh from his uh, cracking tipping exploits at White Hart Lane. What a what a tremendous in running game that was. As it well. was a great game. The betting? Uh, I did watch the betting. Yeah, oh. yeah, it was it was fascinating. And uh, yeah, big thanks to Harry Kane for almost single handedly uh, landing my twenty one to five bet there. Yeah, well done, Michael. Uh, for doing the business for us, future England centre forward, no doubt. Some really fascinating matchups coming away this weekend on the Premier League video cast. We're going to start at the Stadium of Light. Uh, no, not Portugal, but the northeast of England. As Sunderland take on Liverpool, it's 14th versus 8th. As Sunderland collected more points on their travels than they have done at home, Simon, 11 versus 9. But the big stat here they've drawn 6 at home. And Liverpool have drawn five away. So what is the is it worth debating this game? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Sunderland are the main draw culprits in the Premier League pool. They draw so many games, which makes their form really difficult to assess. But I think um, I'm not going to oppose Liverpool here. Uh, oh, I think some people oh. might be tempted to, um, but they're a best price nineteen to twenty to win the match. Yeah. I think that's about the right price. I have Liverpool around even money shots to win this. Their away win ratio is normally around 50%. They've won four of their last eight away Premier League games, which, considering their struggles, is pretty good. Since the start of last season, it's uh, it's a 50% win ratio exactly. I think 14 from 28. So I think even money to win a, a bottom half club by Sunderland is about OK. Yeah. Um, obviously, Sunderland draw a lot of games, as you said, Paul. Gus Poyet's home league record's pretty poor. He's played 25 home games at the Stadium of Light. They've only won six of them. Ouch! Drawn nine, lost ten. They're not in good form since the time where Derby, which they won, they picked up one point in three. So I think Liverpool will probably win the match. Um, no point in opposing them at the price. But there is a good bet here, Paul. It's over two and a half goals, uh, which is the best price, 39 to 40. So just a shade of odds on, but I think that's a good price. Liverpool's away games, Paul, as I say every time, they have so many goals in them. They've gone over two and a half in seven of their nine away league games this well, season. Well, that many? Wow. Going further back, 14 of their last 16. 14 of their last 16 That's away huge. league games have gone That's over two and a half goals. Well, that makes it um, a one to three shot, doesn't it? Huh? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's easy to see why as well. It's not an anomaly. I mean, obviously, Liverpool are good going forward. They've scored nine in their last four games. The new system starting to work, particularly against Swansea when they won 4-1, they were very good. Yeah. But they still can't defend. They've got a terrible goalkeeper and a terrible defence. They've shipped 16 and 9 on the road. I'd certainly expect Sunderland to score at least one here. I know Sunderland is struggling for goals and people might tell me that the Stadium of Light is not normally the place to go for goals. But at least they got a couple in the 3-2 defeat at Man City yeah. last time out. Uh, they've at least scored in the last three home league games. Um, I, I, and I just think with a team with such high overs uh, goal trend as Liverpool come to town... Over two and a half goals shouldn't be as big as 39 to 40, so I think that's that's a solid bet. They'll score as long as Fletch plays and Altidore doesn't. The Man Mountain, maybe he should go to Wimbledon. Yeah. And it'll be a double Man Mountain yeah. playing up front for the Dons. Welcome back, Thomas. Uh, first match for you uh, since you've come back to Easy Odds. Sunderland versus Liverpool. Uh, do you see this ripe for goals like Simon does? Uh, I can't can't disagree with Simon. I think he's okay. got all the, all the stats and facts and figures there to suggest that it could be a high-scoring game. But um, I actually just think Liverpool are pretty decent value to win the game. I think 19-20 really? is a fair enough price. You can get 1.98 on the exchanges. Um, just couldn't really find much else elsewhere, to be honest. I thought the best value was just simply back in Liverpool. They're in fairly decent form. And, uh, they had a pretty poor start to the season, but yeah. since losing four in a row back in November... Uh, they've only lost one of the last 12 and that was at Old Trafford which is uh, understandable losing at Old Trafford United are in good form there away from home they're in pretty good as well won four of the last five scored 12 in the last six away from home as well so scoring a few goals as well mm -hmm. and they're playing a Sunderland side who are probably the epitome of a uh, Averageness in the Premier League. They're, they're 14th and they're, they're a mid table team. Just two wins in 11. That One of those was in the FA Cup last weekend against Leeds as well. Mm. Uh, that's at home. And, and the, other, the other home league win, their only home league win, came back on the 4th of October. So it's a long time since they've won at home. Yeah. Obviously, it is a concern that they draw a lot of games and they're quite stubborn. But I'd say they're, they're almost losing games rather than almost winning games mm. at the moment. And they're playing inside, they're a lot better than them. So I'd just simply be back in Liverpool here. I think they're pretty decent value at almost evens. Quote unquote from Tom, the epitome 
of averageness, which probably describes our two teams as well at the moment. Well, I'm not sure averageness is a word, but... Uh, <laughs> it sounds good, actually. Yeah, I'll be in the dictionary next time around. Let's move on to uh, Crystal Palace versus Spurs. Uh, we've got 18th versus 5th here. Uh, Spurs, following the trend from last season's side, in that their away record is pretty good. They've got the third best away record in the Premier League. Yeah, it doesn't seem to matter who the Spurs manager is, Paul. They just have an amazing away record. Um, mm. Since the start of last season, as you said, they've won 15 of 28, which is very, very good. It's only two less than Man City, who were, who were the champions last year. So that's very good form. Um, they've ruled off four wins from the last five away league games. Um, most of them were 2-1 last-minute goals involving a red card for the other team, but it's still good. Um, and obviously, they're coming off the back of the 5-3 win over Chelsea, which was sensational. So... Tottenham are 6-5 to five to win the match. Again, I think that's about right. Um, I had them about evens. I don't think it's enough value to advise a bet. Okay. I expect them to win the match. I know Crystal Palace obviously have new manager syndrome with, with Alan Pardew coming in, but they've been all over the place at Selhurst Park. They've got, they're on a long winless run. I don't think Alan Pardew's the type of manager to turn it around straight away as well. I think 11-4 to four is about the right price on them. So I'm going to avoid the match odds, but there's a bet here I really like, Paul. And again, it's over 2.5 oh. goals. Which is 11 to 10. I really thought it would be odds on. Um, I think 11 to 10 is a cracking price on overs. Um, Pardew's already said Palace will go on the offensive uh, under him. it would be much more aggressive than under Keith Millen or, or, or Warnock. He picked a straight 4 4 2 against Dover. I know it's only Dover, but they won 4 0 playing, playing very attacking. He's an old school 4 4 2 manager. He'll pick two up front with two wide men. I'd expect to see Crystal Palace go at Spurs. In fact, this reminds me of a similar situation to uh, West Ham at the start of the season when there was no statistical evidence to support over two and a half goals than West Ham played. But he just knew Sam Allardyce had played, got a different philosophy. The bookies didn't come on to it quickly enough. I think it's a similar situation here. And Spurs, they always go over two and a half goals away from home. Well, seven of their, their nine away this season have gone overs. Obviously, they beat Chelsea 5-3 last time out. The forward line's looking very, very sharp. Harry Kane in particular, I, I was sceptical about Harry Kane, I must say, but Harry he was absolutely Kane. brilliant Come against on, Chelsea. Kane. And um, with Palace's defence, you'd expect him to single handedly score at least one. So yeah. I'm very confident over two and a half goals is a top value price at 11 to 10. Okay. Harry Kane, but very able uh, Palace uh, versus Spurs. So Simon's now gone for two over two and a half goals, which is actually it's rather unlike you. <laughs> it really is. Uh, have you got something at your sleeve for me here, Tom? Um, I'm actually quite glad you went with uh, Simon first because then all I have to say is, yeah, ditto to everything that Simon said. <laughs> uh, I think you've got it pretty much spot on. I'll pretend that I, I got every single stat as well that Simon had. Uh, of course. De definitely got everything in there Obviously. that he had. I'll just say, in terms of the match odds, I'd probably say Spurs are ever so slightly too short. I know, I know they have got a decent away record, but they have been quite fortunate in some of those games. I know, in particular, the one that hurt me was the, the 2 1 win at Villa Park, where a bit of a 1 0 up after 84 minutes, Bintendi wrongly sent off, and uh, a deflected goal won them the match in injury time. I, I don't think they've been as convincing as the stats suggest they have been away oh, from right. home, and I think they've been close to to a few draws and that they won very late at Swansea as well didn't they Hull they had I, I thought uh, Gaston Ramirez is probably wrongly sent off in that one mm -hmm. as well so I wouldn't be backing them at 6-5 to five. And, and the other thing is, is it's always tough playing a team that have got a new manager because Sellers Park will be bouncing it usually is anyway but um, yeah they'll be uh, they'll be really up for this one as well so I certainly wouldn't back Spurs but um, over two and a half goals is definitely the way to go ditto ditto over two and a half goals over two and a half goals as we move to North London for the fixture between Arsenal and Stoke City. Uh, it's six versus 11. Uh, and since Stoke returned to the Premier League, they've uh, lost five of six of these fixtures at Arsenal mm. with an aggregate scoreline against them of 13 to three. Yeah, they have a poor record at the Emirates, Paul. Um, I, I'm not going to oppose Arsenal here either. I think Arsenal are one to two shots. And You're not going uh, over two and a half goals? I'm not actually. It's okay. similar, but I think <laughs> Arsenal are correct one to two shots. Yeah. They're, they're, they've obviously been inconsistent this season, but they're reliable at home against the lower teams normally. Mm -hmm. uh, 18 wins from 28 since the start of last season at the Emirates. Uh, they've won the last three home league games on the bounce. You'd expect them to win this most of the time. Stoke are seven to one shots. I think that's a reflection of their improved road form this season. They've got the eighth best away league record. Um, I think uh, this time last year they probably would have been double figures to win this match. But I think 7-1 to one is the right reflection of how they've improved. I wouldn't expect them to win, but that's about the right price. But I think both teams to score here, Paul, um, which is the best price of 20 to 21. So second odds on shot, but um, quite unlike me. But I think this is, this is, again, a really good price. Both teams have scored in seven of Arsenal's nine home league games this season. Some really poor sides have scored there. Palace scored there, QPR scored there, Hull scored twice. 
Um, and you, it's easy to see why, because so many of their defensive players are having terrible seasons. I mean, was it Chesney? I don't know what's going on there. Um, well, he's been smoking in the showers. He's been smoking in the showers. Problem. Apparently he's going to retain his place, although he's been reprimanded, which confuses me. Surely he should leave him out for smoking. Um, <laughs> Anyway, Per Mertesacker, who I'm a big fan of, has just been dreadful as well. well he should uh, be in Blackpool Beach. Uh, he they, should be, yeah. yeah. Basically, uh, Arsenal's defence is just rubbish, which uh, I always thought they were underrated, but this season they've been terrible. Stoke have scored in eight of their ten away league matches this season, which is an wow. amazing improvement. They only scored in ten away matches the whole of last season. They've already scored in eight of ten this season, so <laughs> they really are much better on the road uh, nowadays. They played the rest of the top five on the road already. They scored all of them apart from Southampton. So they're well capable of scoring on the road. Um, obviously, there's no uh, Marmite Graham Duff. He's at the African Cup of Nations. But they've got some other good options. Peter Crouch always enjoys playing against Arsenal. Uh, Bojan should be fit. He's finally starting to show uh, what he's about. So uh, Arsenal should score as well, obviously. They've scored in every home league game this season. So I really like both teams to score. I think it should be shorter than 20 to 21. How many stats in that preview? Uh, that's why you watch the Premier League video cast here at easyodds.com because, I mean, basically we do the work for you. Mm. Fantastic, isn't it? And it's not even a subscription service. Brilliant. Well, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and get it for free, Paul. There you can. So. Brilliant stuff. Uh, Tom, how do you see this game going? Well, uh, there is a bit of disagreement. Uh, there's one, like very, one very specific scoreline that would see us both land this this. Uh, this bet one, one. would be one all, <laughs> one all, yeah, because I think under two and a half goals at 11 to 10 is pretty decent value. Okay. First of all, the match odds, Simon said that they're fine, they are absolutely fine. Uh, Arsenal Warren being one to two, they've won five in a row at home. Generally, see off uh, mid table sides as well, uh, as so far. But I do think much of their success of late is based on a pretty decent defence. I know Simon reeled off a list of teams that scored against them this season, but they were, they were much earlier on in the season. Arsenal have only lead two in their last five home matches gone under two and a half goals in three of those games as well. This time last year, under two and a half goals would almost be a banker at the Emirates. They were, they were, they were about halfway through a ten-match run where they went under two and a half goals in, a, in a, all the time at home. Ten, ten in a row they went under two and a half goals. In total, 61% of their matches at the Emirates wow. last season went under two and a half goals. That's a huge stat. Mostly, mostly due to them winning 2 nil against uh, lower Premier League sides such as Stoke. Stoke have run in a, in a fair few away matches so far this season. At Liverpool, I think they lost 1-0. They won 1-0 at Man City. Won 1-0 at Everton, who I know aren't doing particularly well, but still a particularly uh, mm. decent side. Uh, Southampton, they lost 1-0 as well. So they go under to a fair few times away from home. A very resilient side. I don't think they'll do a massive amount of attacking at the Emirates. Um, Arsenal may struggle to break Stoke down. I, I know um, Welbeck's a doubt for this game as well. Sanchez is basically the only player that's scoring goals for them. I know they've got Walcott back, but I don't know how 100% fit he is after being out for such a long time. So I, I don't think there'll be many goals in this game, so I'll be back in under two and a half goals. Just goes to show you there are statistics and statistics, and you can sort of make and shape them any which way you want to, mm -hmm. in a way. But they're there for you all to see. And don't forget, all Premier League matches, there are literally dozens of markets on each of the games. Not only the live ones, but uh, the ones not on TV as well. But do keep looking right up until kickoff for extra markets to be uh, put up on easyodds.com. They're being added all the time. Let's go to the final uh, live match in this Premier League video cast. We're going to go to Old Trafford. It's Man United versus Southampton. It's third versus fourth. Who would have thought that? At the beginning of January, third versus fourth. Southampton, at the lowest scorers uh, on the road in the top eight in the Premier League top. Well, I didn't know that, but and, and that's a bit of a blow for my... my, my <laughs> <best> <laughs> I've actually blown your cover. Yeah, but, um, yeah I, I think United are a little bit too short for this game. Um, mm. I think when they, they, they played each other last month, Southampton would have been the team ahead of Man United, and they certainly mm. weren't 4-5 to win that match. I agree. I know they didn't win the match, but they were very unfortunate not to. I think Man United had the lowest amount of shots on target that they've had in like, Premier League history for a long time. They had two shots, scored two goals, and were, were fortunate to win the game 2-1. But... They're only one place and one point ahead of Southampton, so four to five looks way too short. I think you can get around even money on Southampton or draw on the double chance market, but as we like to do um, in the Asian handicap market, if you go Southampton plus a half, you'll get better value. They're 28 to 25, um, that particular selection. Uh, United have tailed off a little bit. I know they've won something like six in a row back in December. They've only actually won one of their... Uh, sorry, they failed to win three of the last four matches. So they're not exactly in sparkling form going into this match. Uh, Southampton at the same time as United were winning six in a row, they were losing five in a row back in December. They've turned things around quite a lot. They've uh, they've been beaten in um, 
in the last five matches, which includes a draw against Chelsea, a win against Arsenal on New Year's Day, so they're in pretty decent form. They're missing Sadio Mane for this game, he's at the African Cup of Nations, which is a bit of a blow, but it means Shane Long comes into the side. And he's actually your favourite uh, player. My favourite player. Come on, Longy. He, he's actually quite a good player to have in these kind of games. He's just gonna you chase. can't be bigging up Shane Long now. He's running down the channels, well, chasing the ball. Not so much that he's just going to chase Man United's uh, <laughs> back four. Um, I, you know, I choose to play the Shane Long card whenever I want, and I, <laughs> and I think uh, it's the time to, to play the Shane Long card. So I'll just be back in Southampton to avoid defeat here. At, uh, best prize twenty eight to twenty five. Okay, uh, an odds against uh, wager for you there twenty eight. Uh, to 25 and uh, Simon how do, you, how do you view your beloved Manchester United at the moment everybody says they've turned a corner but have they gone round to the other side yet because it's sort of a mixed messages almost isn't it, it is yeah I think results suggest they've turned a corner but performances certainly yeah. don't um, you can say that the United are very lucky to be third right now and I would agree with that however their Old Trafford form is just starting to get pretty good they're reading off a few straight wins I was very, I was very, very close to tipping Southampton to win this match, though, Paul. What um, price? They're four to one at the moment. I wanted nine to two, to be honest. Uh, yeah. And I'm very, very strict with my uh, with my odds, Paul. And if I, I don't I get the choice I want, yeah. I don't, I don't get involved. So, yeah. I think if you can get nine to two on a Southampton win, I'd take it. But they're four to one at the moment, so I wouldn't do that. Um, however, the bet for me, Paul, is is over two and a half goals again. Gosh. And again, it's it's odds against. It's twenty one to twenty. Okay. This is a bet that nearly always lands at home for United. Uh, eight of their ten home league games this season under Louis van Gaal have gone over two and a half goals, including the last four at home. Uh, van Gaal's got so many striking options now. It looks like Angel de Maria's fit again, which is always a massive, adds an extra dimension to their attack. He scored a, a nice goal against, uh, admittedly against Yeovil, but he looked like he was pretty sharp on his FA Cup comeback last time out. Saints obviously score less on the road, as you said, Paul, but they're starting to score more goals again now. Um, nine in the last four league games, uh, including a 2 0 win over Arsenal last time out, which I thought was, was pretty decent, could have been by more. Obviously, uh, Mane's out now, he's at the Africa Cup of Nations. In fact, he's injured now, isn't he? He's not even going there. But Cooper's got plenty of other options, as Tom mentioned, the, the Shane Long card. He's also got in uh, Elia, the, the Dutch winger on loan, who I, I always thought was a talented player. He's never quite fulfilled his potential, but I think Southampton could be the sort of club where he could uh, play quite oh, well, wow. could make his debut here, I'd, I'd watch out for him. Um, I, I still think, uh, despite Southampton's normal, normally low goals away trends, over two and a half goals is the bet at 21-20. Maybe you want to combine Simon's three over two and a half goals prediction in a patent. Three singles, three doubles... And a treble. That'd be a nice bet to go in if the ball starts wrapping the back of the net. Let's move on to the best bets for this Premier League video cast. Thomas, TV or non TV? You're, you're probably right to come to me first because mine's a lot less exciting than um, Simon's. It, it's, quite, it's quite a tough one this weekend. It is it's quite yeah, tough yeah. to find um, some value. I actually think um, Villa are a little bit too big uh, away to Leicester just based on the fact Leicester's got two. I think they're over three to one, which is too big a price. Oh, wow. I know they didn't score many goals, but they only need to score <laughs> one in this game. Uh, but um, I, I've gone for a bit more of a safe option, and it's in one of the, the least uh, looking entertaining games of the weekend. It's West Brom Hull, obviously. <laughs> a lot of people will be looking at, looking at this game trying to find a live stream somewhere on the internet to watch it. But um, <laughs> I actually think time of first goal here, 0 to 33 minutes at evens, is, is a good price. I'm probably wondering where I've got that from. Um, landed in eight of the 13, 13 games of the Hawthorns this season, so it happens quite a lot. Mm. Obviously, West Brom scored seven last weekend against Gateshead, are probably about as good as Hull are at the moment. Uh, lots of goals and holes away matches. They're, they're pretty awful at the moment. Um, could only beat Everton 2 0, which is a pretty poor result. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just like the way we think uh, Palace will come, come out of the blocks, because. Uh, Alan Partridge in charge is obviously the Tony Pulis effect at the Hawthorns as well. Uh, and he's a pretty decent manager in, in this kind of game. This is a classic Tony Pulis kind of game. So it's a strange one, but time of first goal, 0 to 33 minutes at the Hawthorns. A couple of slights there from Tom. He'll be in court I know, uh, very shortly. I know, I know what Simon's tip is, so I, I knew he'd. Uh, Totally me up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Simon, you're obviously going to go out on a limb here. What's your best bet of the week? Yeah, out on a limb as always, Paul. Um, I'm actually tipping your beloved Everton to uh, to start Man City. Uh, <laughs> you're which, kidding. Uh, <laughs> which uh, it's a great price, oh. Paul. It's a great price. Oh. Uh, Seventy-one to twenty uh, is the best price at the moment. I know Everton are in poor form, Paul, but. 22% chance of winning? No way, they have a much, much better chance than that. Um, their home record under Martinez is still very good. That defeat to Stoke was their first league defeat in six at Goodison Park. They still don't lose many at Goodison Park. It's still a tough place to go. 
and they have an amazing record in this fixture, Paul. You've won four of your last five home league games against City. It's exactly the sort of game Everton play well in. The underdog mentality of Goodison Park, City will come on to them. They'll really enjoy it. Stephen Naismith is tailor made for games like this, honestly. <laughs> um, and Man City, I mean, obviously they're churning out results, but their personnel issues. I mean, now Yaya Torre is away at the African Cup. Well. That yeah. is a big miss. Aguero supposedly might be on the bench, but I'm not, I'm not massively convinced. Company could be out still. They could easily be lining up here without the complete spine of their team. Pellegrini loses just over 20% of his away league games, so, which implies that an average team should be around this price to beat Man City. I think Everton are above average at home. The Goodison Park record is still solid long term. I'm more than happy to back them at 71 to 20. OK, I pledge here on this CZ Odds video cast that if Everton do <laughs> take three points from Man City, I shall buy Simon Hopper lunch on Tuesday afternoon. You heard it here first. However... It's easy, isn't it? Gentlemen, thank you so much. Don't forget to uh, check out the Football League uh, tipping column as well. Uh, plenty of other video casts as well. Bigger a weekend of horse racing as well with PJ and Don't Leon. But have a profitable and a safe weekend.